Hello, this is Pastor Bella. Good evening, God girls, and welcome to Husbands of the Bible, Part 15. And we are looking at a very unique husband tonight. Remember, in order to discuss a man as a husband, we must first discuss his character. So when the Lord laid him on my heart, I said, wow, this is, this is interesting. This is different. And I was going to do a separate teaching about him, but I said, wow, we're in the husbands of the Bible. And this is a spirit. He's actually a spirit that lives on today. And so he's being categorized as the husband of the Bible because he was a husband. But we're going to talk more in terms of him as a spirit. We are looking at Pharaoh tonight. Pharaoh. And we're looking at the Pharaoh during the time of Moses. One thing you need to realize about Pharaoh is Pharaoh was an enemy of God. Clear enemy of God. And during the time of Joseph... Joseph found such favor with Pharaoh. The Egyptians and the Israelites were never friends. There was heavy discrimination upon them. And if you go back to the time of Joseph, you'll see that a specific place had to be created in Egypt for the Israelites because on a good day, Egyptians wanted nothing to do with the children of Israel. And that's where they were given the land in Egypt called Goshen. So God really gave Joseph unique favor during his time. And it just shows you the power of God. A lot of us have forgotten how powerful God is. God is so powerful where in situations that other people are locked out and are unable to get past an obstacle. But if the favor of God is upon you and the grace of God is upon you, you can overcome just as Joseph did with his Pharaoh. But the typical Pharaoh, the typical Pharaoh is the Pharaoh during the time of Moses. So when we go to the book of Exodus, you will see that in Exodus chapter 1, verse 8, the word of God says, Now there arose a new king over Egypt. Pharaoh is the king of Egypt. Who did not know Joseph? So that era of favor was over. This was a new era. A new era where Pharaoh is the enemy of God. Because if anyone despises you, you who is a child of God, that person has determined to be the enemy of God. So the Pharaoh spirit is very destructive. It is a spirit of bondage. It is a spirit of slavery. It is a spirit of destruction. The Pharaoh spirit is a destroyer. It seeks to keep you in bondage. It does not build you up. It tears you down every step of the way. And it will never allow you to be free. Never. The Pharaoh spirit doesn't want you to be free. The Pharaoh spirit wants you to stay oppressed wants you to stay under, doesn't want to see you rise. And yesterday on Issues Monday, a question came up about, you know, if, if a man is born again and he fears the Lord and he has all the right traits, does that mean that's the will of God for you to marry? And it really amazes me that a lot of women in the church, and even men too, have the thinking that because someone is born again, automatically that person, you should make an effort to date that person. No. No, 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 no. That's not the way it works. When you identify someone and I'm speaking for men now, you know, when a man identifies someone that has the traits of 
a godly wife. She's born again. She loves the Lord. She fears the Lord. You know, she's she seems to be working in the line that he's working in. Maybe he has a heart for the mission field and she has a heart for the mission field. What he should do at that point is take her to God. Lord, I've identified someone that looks like she would align with me. Lord, what do you have to say on this? You don't just get up and start dating people because they fulfill a criteria. You still need to ask the Lord. And I went back into Genesis 24, and I'm taking time to talk about this because there was a time I actually wrote it on Facebook because I'm finding that some people really think that, oh, because someone's born again and automatically you can go ahead and date them and marry them. No, you still need to ask the Lord. Is this born again man mine? Is this born again woman mine? You don't just get up and date someone just because on the surface it looks they look like a perfect fit. God knows the perfect fit for you. So always inquire of God every step of the way concerning your job, concerning your education, concerning your life partner, concerning everything. Please, 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 please contact the Lord and get to know the Lord and If you really are someone who knows how to spend time with God and build intimacy with God and know the voice of God, there will be no confusion. Another lady was saying um, various men are stepping up to her and how to know who the right one is. Again, I'm taking time to talk about this because we go back to the time of Prophet Samuel when he was choosing the next king of Israel, when he was getting ready to anoint the next king of Israel. Ultimately, It was God's choice, not Samuel's choice, because at a point, Samuel wanted to pick one of David's brothers, and the Lord cautioned him. So when men, different men are approaching you who look good on the surface, you still need to go to God and say, Father, is this the one that you have ordained for me? Because a lot of people are making marital mistakes, and we have to be very careful where people look good on the surface, and things look good on the surface, but God is the Alpha and the Omega, He knows the ending from the beginning. He knows what is yours, what belongs to you. So take the time to inquire from God. Again, I was talking about Genesis 24, where Abraham sent his servant, Eliezer, to find a wife for Isaac. And the criteria was, got to be from a godly family. And so when Eliezer got to the land, and he, his eyes were on the lookout for a godly woman. But even in that moment, he had to ask the Lord for signs. So it wasn't just any godly woman he wanted. He wanted the godly woman, the right godly woman that God had ordained for Isaac. Please, when it comes to marriage, y'all better be careful. Y'all better be careful. We're looking at the Pharaoh's spirit tonight. And so I have to start from the unequally yoked scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial, or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Belial is another name for Satan. An unbeliever does not have the Spirit of God operated in him or her. So when you get married to someone who is an unbeliever, you're basically getting married to the devil. The Word of God is telling you. What accord has Christ with Belial? If you don't have the Holy Spirit working in you, well, another spirit is working in you, and it's not the Spirit of God. That's why the Spirit of God is called the Holy Spirit. There are many spirits, but there's only one Holy Spirit. So if not if it's not the Holy Spirit in you, guess what? It's a spirit from the pit of hell. A spirit that is an enemy to God. So I had to come to this scripture because Pharaoh, the Pharaoh's spirit is an enemy to God. It is an enemy to your progress. It is an enemy 
to your destiny. It does not want you to rise. It does not want you to succeed. It wants to keep you in bondage forever. When we go to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 15, the word of God tells us, for you did not receive a spirit of slavery to bring you back again into fear. On the contrary, you receive the spirit who makes us sons and by whose power we cry out, Abba, that is dear father. God is your father. God loves you. God wants the best for you. But somewhere along the way, some of us have met pharaohs. And somewhere along the way, some of us got married to Pharaoh. And <laughs> if you got married to Pharaoh, you need to spend time in the book of Exodus. Because there's only one way out of that marriage. This is something that the body of Christ skirts around. They don't really want to talk about, but it exists. A lot of women are in abusive marriages. They are in marriages of bondage and slavery. I am in a lot of groups on social media because that's the area God called me to. Marriage, relationships, family, for the singles, for the married. And the stories that I come across, they amaze me. They amaze me what the marriage institution has become. When you get married to someone who wants to oppress you and keep you in bondage, you are married to a Pharaoh. There is no love in Pharaoh towards you. Pharaoh is about bondage and suffering. And that's why a, a saying came up where I'm sure you've seen it. Marriage is, a lot of people are in, marriage is to enjoy, not to endure. A lot of people are enduring, enduring. And you need to understand that, of course, marriage has its challenges. And yes, it will get to a point that you will have to endure some things. But there are some things that can, should not be endured, like abuse, like domestic violence, like bondage, like oppression. That is the Pharaoh spirit. The Pharaoh spirit is filled with such hatred, indifference, and violence towards you. The Pharaoh spirit is very, very hard hearted. Hard hearted. Unrepentant. There's nothing you can do about that Pharaoh. God Himself is going to have to intervene and deliver you. There's only one way out. There's only one way out. So when people want to come up and say, God hates divorce, you can't get divorced, you, you stay in it, that is very destructive. Very destructive because some, many people are stuck because of that scripture. And that's why the Lord laid it on my heart to write a book, Understanding Divorce, A Divine Perspective. That scripture speaks to those who started off their marriage as children of God. That scripture speaks to those who are familiar with the commandments of God. When two born-again Christians get together, God is speaking to you. But if you married an unbeliever, and you made a terrible mistake and you had no idea how to really have a relationship with God and the marriage is utterly abusive and destructive is God a wicked God to hold you to that and tell you to stay there and die there just as God delivered the children of Israel from Pharaoh God himself will deliver you but you gotta be wise you got to be wise. I say it all the time that I'm not the one that will tell you to stay there and suffer. I will tell you to get your stuff and leave. You can pray and intercede from another location, but you don't need to stay there and be oppressed, be beaten down, be destroyed. No. Get out. Get out. There is no collaboration with the Pharaoh spirit. The Pharaoh spirit is destructive. The Pharaoh spirit 
is the enemy of God and therefore your enemy. Sometimes it will feel like, it will literally feel like God and devil in the house. If you are a Christian filled with the spirit of God and you are married to an unbeliever. And that's why when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Apostle Paul says if the unbeliever is willing to live with you. Because I'm not saying all unbelievers have the Pharaoh spirit now. <laughs> Some of them can actually live with you and be nice to you and be morally right to you. And you have to really pray and intercede for their salvation. But on the other hand, some of them are utterly destructive. And that's when you see that there is a thing line between love and hate. Because this person vowed to love you, honor you, cherish you, all that stuff. And then you get married to that person. And when you carry the spirit of God and that person refuses to carry the spirit of God, it's going to be like the devil and God are trying to live together in the same house. And that can't work because God kicked the devil out of heaven. He kicked Lucifer out. He kicked him out. So how can you then have fellowship with Belial? Someone that has the spirit of the devil in him or in her. So the Pharaoh spirit is a spirit that you need to recognize. And it's not only in the area of marriage. Of course, we're talking about the husbands of the Bible. Your eyes need to be open to understand that there are some people in your life that will not allow you to rise. They don't want you to be better. They want you to stay where you are and they will use their words to cut you down. Even if they're not physically hitting you, they will use their words to cut you down. And it will get to the point that no matter how smart and beautiful you are, you're going to start to believe that you are stupid and you're not good looking and you are not of worth. And that's why the God Girl Initiative is really a ministry about birthing your identity in Christ. Your identity does not lie in the hand of any human being. Because some of you come here so damaged, either based on what your family did to you, because we, we start building self-esteem as children from the family you grow up in. And then it continues in marriage. So when the people... Who God has given to you to love you are the ones that are destroying you you lose yourself along the way and that's why you have to draw close to God and discover that you have a purpose you're not just coming to this earth to be bullied and oppressed you came to be liberated by God you came to fulfill your purpose so let me tell you the only advantage the only advantage of the Pharaoh spirit the Pharaoh spirit <laughs> will push you into your purpose. A lot of you think that purpose is birthed from comfort. You think, oh, you're in your comfort zone, and Lord, please show me my purpose. Lord, show me my purpose. Purpose is birthed through pain. It is birthed through your passion. It is birthed through your talents. Those are the three things. They're part of your purpose. They, they are directionally based on what God created you for, but you still need to go back to God. Lord, why am I here? And he will put a burden on your heart. And it's not from a place of enjoyment. It will get to the point that even if you're comfortable as you are, God will then open your eyes that, okay, you're comfortable, but then look at your community how are they doing in your community? He may, put, he may put widows on your heart, orphans on your heart, the disabled on your heart, a particular sickness on your heart. That's what God does. So you and I, we are here for something, not just to be oppressed by Pharaoh. And so, if you happen to be married to a Pharaoh, there's only one way out. And it's not you that will do it. It's the God that you serve that will do it for you.
So Pharaoh will push you into your purpose because what Pharaoh did for Moses, remember when God came to Moses, Moses was afraid. Moses ran away from Egypt because he committed murder and he went into the wilderness and he hid there, started a life for himself with his wife and his children and all that. But God called him. God will call you out of your comfort zone. No experience is wasted. All that background of Moses being found as a baby in a basket, growing in the palace of the Pharaoh, all that, mm, Moses, you think you're going to waste that? No. God had to use that. Moses was very familiar with Egyptian law, the Egyptian ways, and God was going to use that. So when you look back on your experiences and think, oh, I just wasted my life doing this, or this part of my life, nothing was really happening. No. Every step of the way, God was preparing you for your future, even the mistakes you made along the way. So when you look at Pharaoh, verse 9 of Exodus 1, and he said to his people, look, the people of the of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we come let us deal shrewdly with them lest they multiply and it happen in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us and so go up out of the land therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens and they built for Pharaoh supply cities Pithom and Ramses but the more they afflicted them the more they multiplied and grew and they were in dread of the children of Israel when God is with you, you will thrive, no matter how they are trying to break you down. That's why you have to rest in God. You cannot do this life without God. You need God every step of the way. The Pharaoh's spirit is insecure. And when you run into bullies, if anyone's bullying you, ultimately a bully is an insecure person. A bully is operating from a place of fear. They're just using, it, may, it can be physical strength or just using their words as an abuser to cover up how insecure they are. When you look at Pharaoh, Pharaoh was threatened by the children of Israel. So the way he was going to deal with that threat was to afflict them was to put more work on them, was to be more wicked to them. But they thrived because God was with them. God, girl, God is with you. But you need to recognize the Pharaoh's spirit. It is destructive. It wants to keep you where you are. And it'll get to the point like, Moses, you want to run away from me. But God will teach you how to handle and thrive where Pharaoh is because you will have to experience Pharaoh for a season it's not something that God delivers you from immediately it is a process it took 10 plagues before the children of Israel were allowed to leave Egypt but even after they were on their way out Pharaoh chased after them it is a battle Pharaoh is hard-hearted, Pharaoh is determined, Pharaoh wants to have his way, Pharaoh wants to have the ultimate victory, but thank God you have God, because no man, no Pharaoh, can stand up against God. That's why you need God. You need Him to save you. So you read through the book of Exodus, again, I'm just giving an overview, and you see that God was always with His people. No matter what Pharaoh tried to do. Okay, so when we go to chapter 2, Moses kills an Egyptian. And Pharaoh seeks to kill Moses, and Moses runs away. But in verse 23, now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. So that Pharaoh who sought to kill Moses, that Pharaoh who started off being so wicked to the children of Israel, he dies. But the wickedness does not end. His legacy continues. The Pharaoh that succeeded him was even more wicked because that's the one that Moses has to go back and confront. That Pharaoh made Moses an intercessor because every time, every time <laughs> a plague was sent, Moses had to go intercede and ask the Lord to stop the plague. So being around a Pharaoh's spirit is going to build up your, your prayer life. That's another 
positive thing. A lot of Christians don't want to pray. And I'm telling you, without prayer, you cannot make it. You cannot. God are the days that you go to your pastor, 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 pray for me. Pastor, pastor, is this the one that I should marry? No. I teach you all how to hear God for yourselves. If you can hear God for yourself, you will not be confused, you will not be anxious, you will not be scared. I told them yesterday at Issues Monday, I said, when it comes to relationship and courtship, and you're asking God about a particular person, and Lord, is this the person for me? No matter how good that person looks, if God is silent on the matter, do not proceed. You must receive the peace of God and endorsement from God before you venture into anything in life. When God is silent, that's not the time to take a decision. It's not. The only other time that God can be silent is if he has already told you what to do and you are afraid to take that step. So if God has already made it clear that he wants you to move to the other side of the world, maybe go to China and be a missionary, and you keep on asking him and asking him and asking him, he'll just go silent because he's already told you, just like what he did to his son on the cross. When Christ cried out, oh God, why have you forsaken me? God couldn't say anything at that point because... That's the mission. Jesus, you're supposed to die for the whole world. I cannot talk to you right now because it's already set. This is what's supposed to happen. I see you're suffering and you're going to have to go through this. I can't say anything else on the matter. I have not forsaken you. This is the mission. So in that instance, God was silent. But then when Christ returned to heaven, God rewarded him with the name above all names and established him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So you need to understand the silence of God. God is silent when he has already told you what to do. But if you have not received anything from God on a matter and he still refuses to speak on a matter, you better not take that decision. You will create an Ishmael. So when you build intimacy with God, you will understand how God speaks. You will understand God's will. It's not about how something looks good on the surface. Because God knows the end and God knows the heart of a human being. He knows the intentions of a human being. Another prayer you need to pray when you're getting ready to be in courtship with someone. Say, Lord, expose what I can't see. Because we all know how to make present the best part of ourselves. And some people are really, really deceptive. And you think that they are born again Christians. You think that they are godly people. And then you feel comfortable going into a courtship with them. But that's the problem if you don't go in with God. Because God will expose them to you. He will. If you ask God. And if you're a praying woman. He will open your eyes. He will open your eyes to the situation about that person. He will speak to your heart about that person. So please, don't venture into anything without God. The times we are living, it is crucial more than ever as a child of God never to take a decision outside of God. Because it causes so much delay and heartache in your life. And a lot of people are joking around with marriage. That love, the love of man in you cannot sustain marriage. It is the love of Christ. The love of Christ is beautiful. It looks inwardly. It goes beyond the love of man. It decides each day to forgive. It doesn't keep offense in its heart. It goes on. It is committed. It will stand by you no matter what. That is godly marriage. I go back to Isaac and Rebecca. Isaac and Rebecca. Rebecca was barren for 20 years. Isaac stood by her. All the years that Sarah was barren, Abraham stood by her and was still crazy over her. Until she herself suggested to Abraham, why don't you go in and sleep with Hagar because, hey, we need a descendant. And Abraham turned his ears away from God in that moment because God had promised him a descendant. But in that moment, Abraham chose to listen to the voice of his wife. So even in Christendom, be careful of the voices around you. 
Don't just say, oh, because this is a Christian or this is a pastor, then that's what I need to do. No, you still need to go back to God and get clearance from God because it is your life. It is your life. There's some things that people will tell you, yeah, go ahead and marry this guy. He's good, he's great, he's this, but then you get married to him and then you find out otherwise. So it's better to inquire of the Lord before you step into anything because you know, you know that if you're going in with God, God will be with you. And that's what God promised Moses. God promised Moses that Pharaoh's going to be a tough nut to crack, but I'm with you and I will display my power. But you got to go through that process. Ten plagues. Read the story. I'm not going to read it to you. You should know what the Israelites went through with Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the spirit of bondage. And you need to recognize that anyone who's trying to keep you in slavery, keep you under your feet, who does not recognize the best in you, that's the Pharaoh's spirit. But on the upside, you're going to be a better praying Christian. And you're going to step into your purpose. It's going to push you to the next level of your life. That's the advantage of the Pharaoh's spirit. And the greatest advantage is God is right there with you. And that's why the beginning and ending of your life, you must have an intimate relationship with the Most High God. I'm telling you. I don't sit around being worried about stuff. What's the use? What's the use worrying about things that you can't physically fix? Do you know what I do? I tell God all about it. I give it to God. I say, Lord, you have all the power. I have nothing. And this is the need right now. This is the situation right now. I give it to him and then I just... Focus on my day. A lot of us are sitting now worrying about things we can't fix. A lot of us are sitting now trying to plan for things that you're just wasting your time planning. Moses was sitting in Midian. He thought he, thought he had found a new, a new life for himself when God came calling. God came calling. I was speaking to a lady recently... And she opened up to me about her unique situation. And so I was encouraging her. I said, I was in the U.S. for 16 years. And then the Lord drew me back home to my home country, Nigeria. And she was basically reluctant to start all over again. And it's a fear a lot of us face, starting all over again. Go back to Abraham. When you are aligned with God... Starting all over again is not a big deal because God makes ways. He's the one who parted the Red Sea. That decision that you're afraid to take, you're holding yourself back because what, what, what you will find out is when you take that step of faith, God has already created what you need where you need to be. Leaving the U.S. and coming back to Nigeria was a little scary, but God had created in Nigeria what I needed to function in Nigeria. And if I had stayed back in the U.S. being afraid to take that step, I would have delayed so much in my life. When you are walking with God, there is no need to be afraid. And if you're afraid, you turn your fears into prayer points. That's what I've taught you all to do. Anything you're afraid about, pray about it. A lot of us are afraid of the unknown. And yes, it's typical because we're human. We don't know what tomorrow looks like. But because you have God, God is already in your tomorrow. So you express yourself. I talk to God like a friend. I talk to him like a friend. I say, Lord, this is it. This is how I feel. This is what I'm concerned about. Lord, I give it to you. And God is so beautiful because he made me. He knows what I need. And so when he packages it and gives it to me, it is like, yeah, Father, you know me. Just like you know your children. You know what your children like. You know. It's the same thing with God. He know, He created you. He uniquely wired you. So He knows who you are. Don't be afraid. 
as long as you're walking with God. Just learn to hear the voice of God. If you know how to hear the voice of God, then you will know how to rest in God. Because a lot of us want it now, 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 but God's time. God's time may not be now, 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 but it will suddenly come around. And he will give you the grace to endure and wait for him. So please recognize the Pharaoh's spirit. Recognize the Pharaoh's spirit. It is the enemy of God. And in marriage, it is extremely painful to be married to a Pharaoh. But that Pharaoh is going to push you into a greater you. So allow Pharaoh to push you into a greater you. Don't let him break you down. Don't let him destroy you. The only way you can rise above Pharaoh is by staying close to God. That's the only way because God has all the power. You don't have nothing. It was God who used Moses to deliver the children of Israel, but still it was a process. Each plague, it got to the point that the Egyptians were complaining that how long will Pharaoh be a snare to us? Can he see us suffering? Pharaoh did not care. He did not care that the people were suffering. He was still against them being free. The Pharaoh spirit is very, very determined, dogged, hard-hearted, will not let you go easily. Will not. So it's a lot of intercession ahead of you. But the wonderful thing is, God himself will pull you out of that situation. And when you come out of that situation, you're going to be stronger than you ever have been in your life. Because you go back to when God called Moses and how Moses was trying to negotiate with God. Because Moses was full of fear. The Bible calls Moses a meek man. He was full of He didn't want to go back to Egypt. But when Moses went through the process of each plague, the confidence in what God had called him to do grew. He, he started to be different from being scared, f- fearful Moses. He was now rising into his purpose. God made it clear to him, Moses, I chose you. Because Moses was trying to make it out for Aaron to be the better leader. But God said, Moses, it is you that I chose. And so there's some things that you will see with your physical eyes and you think, I'm not worthy. This person is better for God to use, but that person is not better because what happened when Moses went up the mountain and put Aaron in charge? (laughs) By the time Moses came down that mountain, the children of Israel had started worshiping a golden calf and Aaron was in charge of that. So do you see what I'm saying? Where on the surface Moses thought Aaron would be a better leader than him, Aaron would never have been a better leader than Moses. Moses was born for this purpose. And God trained him all by himself. And so when you're going through intercessory, when you're going through the wilderness experience with God, when you are battling your Pharaoh or whatever obstacle is in your way, know that you're becoming a stronger Christian, a stronger child of God. You're gaining more confidence in the power of God. And when you come out of that situation, you will never, ever, ever be the same person that you were before that process. That is the good part of the Pharaoh spirit. That is the good part of adversity. It makes you stronger. You cannot succumb to it because inherently we are all survivors. So don't let the Pharaoh spirit break you down. Understand what that spirit is all about and rise above it. Increase your prayer life. Turn closer to God. Let God work through you. Communicate with God and know that God ultimately will deliver you in such a mind-blowing way. Going back to the book of Exodus and seeing the power of God in that book, it is it is sight unseen. Nothing, nothing ever like that. Nothing. It is so amazing the power of God through Moses in that time. The miracles. On the way to the promised land. The miracles pulling them out of Egypt. It is so, so beautiful and amazing. And the God who did that for them will do it for you. You just have to believe that you are a daughter of the Most High God. You are a child of the Most High God. And if you align yourself with God, no son of Belial, no child of Belial can break you down and destroy you. 
you will rise like Moses rose. You will rise. You will confront that Pharaoh in the place of prayer and intercession. And God himself will deliver you. And you will be stronger than you've ever, ever, ever been in your life. And above all, you will fulfill your purpose. Because the Pharaoh spirit is going to push you into your purpose. You can never, ever be the same again when you come across a Pharaoh. You are going to be better if you rise above it. All right, God girls, that's the message. God loves you and I love you. This is Pastor Bella, the ultimate God girl. God bless you.